Pygame Python modules that allow you to develop video games. When you import Pygame, you usually start by setting the screen height and width. Pygame allows you to draw shapes and objects with code. Afterwards, you can add event listeners that listen in for keyboard presses to move the object around the screen. You can also upload images and sound and use them in your game. It also handles animations and collision detection. Usually people use Pygame to create 2D games. However, 3D game development is possible possible with the help of OpenGL. TensorFlow, a Python library for machine learning. It gets its name from the tensor in linear algebra, which is basically the kind of math it uses to work. You can use it to build AI models capable of image recognition, speech recognition, deep learning, and many more. You can get sample training data on the internet, then import it into your Python project or a Jupyter notebook, then use deep learning APIs such as Keras to create an artificial neural network. PyTorch. PyTorch is a library also used to build neural networks. Unlike TensorFlow, PyTorch tends to be a little bit more user-friendly. Without APIs such as Keras, TensorFlow has a much steeper learning curve. You can do data visualization within TensorFlow, although PyTorch relies on external libraries for that. In PyTorch, it's really easy to build neural networks layer by layer. For example, for image recognition, you can insert each pixel as an input layer, then define multiple hidden layers, and also specify which active activation function each node uses, and this can all be done with very little code. Tinker, or T-Kinter, or however you call it, a tool in Python used for building graphical user interfaces. It comes with pre-made widgets that allows you to easily make text boxes, buttons, menus. It also lets you control the design and layout of the program you're creating by making use of rows and grids. You can also use it along with databases and make API calls. It also works very well with other Python libraries such as Matplotlib lib for data visualization. Basically, anything you can see on a screen, you can make it in Kinter or tkinter. Ugh, forget it. OpenCV, standing for Open Computer Vision, is a Python library famous for image recognition. But image recognition is only scratching the surface. It really shines at real-time object detection, facial recognition, hand tracking, motion control, object detection using AI, augmented reality. It can even allow robots to see. NumPy, short for Numerical Python is a package used for scientific computing. It's mostly used for the ease of building multi-dimensional arrays. Now, what is a multi-dimensional array, you ask? In vanilla Python, you can store multiple pieces of information in a data structure called a list. It's basically what it sounds like. Imagine a grocery list or a list of numbers. However, just because you put a bunch of items next to each other in a list doesn't mean it's stored that way in memory. NumPy makes sure all of the information you input put into a list is all placed right next to each other in memory. A list is a single dimensional array, but instead of listing your items in one column, what if you can use rows creating a grid? This is what a multi-dimensional array is, and you can also even go further than two dimensions. By the way, a two-dimensional array is called a matrix, and any array more than two dimensions are called tensors. Basically, NumPy makes handling data and information a lot faster. Pandas, a Python library used for data science. Pandas allows you to structure information by placing it into a data frame. A data frame is a table of rows and columns that help you organize information. A table is a two-dimensional data frame, while a column is a one-dimensional data frame. You can also import and export data. You can also create CSV or TXT files. Basically, anything about working with data, Pandas is good at. Pandas is also built on top of NumPy. Kivi, a Python framework for developing mobile apps or any other touchscreen interface. Kivi allows you to create natural user interfaces. Unlike graphical user interfaces, natural user interfaces or NUI makes use of voice commands, touch gestures, eyes, face, basically anything that doesn't require you pushing a button or clicking. It makes use of widgets such as labels, images, and inputs. Beautiful Soup, a Python module for web scraping. It allows you to pull HTML elements from a website. You can even filter for what type of HTML element to extract. You can pull links, divs, you name it. Mechanical Soup. 
a Python module also for web scraping, although this one is more suited for databases, but it can also scrape HTML elements as well. Selenium. This is also a Python web scraper, but unlike Beautiful Soup, which only scrapes HTML and XML, Selenium can scrape much more of the UI and is really good for websites that are dynamic and have high interactivity. For example, you can automate scraping Instagram hashtags, topics, or anything you want. Scrapey. How about a full Python web scraping framework? It's a framework used for building web spiders and bots. Scrapey is best for a large scale web scraping. Not only can it scrape websites, it can also process that data. Whereas Beautiful Soup only scrapes HTML, and Selenium automates and interacts with dynamic websites. SQL Lite. This allows you to create a serverless database using SQL in your Python project. You can establish a database connection, then a cursor. Then you can insert your SQL code as normal. You can create rows and tables, delete, update, and read information, and it will even create a database file. Pillow, a Python package for image processing and manipulation. It's a fork of the Python imaging library, or Pill for short. It allows you to import and export images, do image editing, drawing, adding filters, and more. On the surface, it seems to be only for image editing, but you can actually also use Pillow for data science, AI, and web development. Matplotlib, a Python package for data visualization. You can create graphs, charts, plots, and you can customize them as well. It's often used in conjunction with NumPy and Pandas. People often use it for data exploration to understand patterns, insights, and trends. SymPy, a powerful math package for Python. It's used for performing symbolic math. It can do algebra, factorization, solve equations, and even calculus such as differentiation and integration. It's basically a calculator on steroids. SciPy, a Python package for scientific computing, calculus, linear algebra, and statistics. This is basically NumPy on steroids. SciPy is used for numerical calculations, as SymPy is used for symbolic manipulation. Scikit-learn, a library for machine learning. It specializes in supervised and unsupervised learning. Although what makes this different from the others is that Scikit-learn is much more for general machine learning, while packages such as TensorFlow and PyTorch focus on deep learning. PyBrain, the Python-based reinforcement learning artificial intelligence neural network. It's a library for machine learning which is no longer maintained, but when it was being actively developed, it was used to build neural networks. But there are better alternatives like the ones I mentioned before. Fiano, a library used for numerical computation well suited for deep learning, but it is also no longer actively developed. It can do symbolic computation and it uses the GPU for faster performance. Natural Language Toolkit, a library for NLP or natural language processing. It allows you to take training data of a massive amount of words called a corpus and be able to perform tokenization. Tokenization is a way of splitting up the words in order to decide how you'll train the neural network. And it also lets you implement algorithms such as the n-grams algorithm. These are algorithms who use the preceding words in order to decide which word comes next. Although natural language processing is not just for ChatGPT, it's also the key thing in keyword searches, search predictions, ad targeting, or anything you could do with keywords. Pickle, a Python module for serialization. Serialization is a way of converting Python objects such as lists, dictionaries, or classes into byte streams or a string of ones and zeros that the computer can read. It allows you to send or store that information in order to be reconverted back. Think of serialization like this. Imagine you have a really cool Lego creation, like a spaceship. It's put together by a lot of different Lego bricks put together in a specific way. Serialization is like taking a picture of your spaceship from every angle, writing down exactly how many bricks you used, and a blueprint on how they all fit together. Then you put all that information into a box, you're essentially serializing your spaceship. Then if you send it off to someone else to build up again, they can build back the spaceship by looking at the instructions. This is deserialization. Piglet, a library for creating games. This library gives Python programs the ability to display graphics, play sound, and handle user input. You can use it to make cross-platform games, and it's built on top of a powerful graphics library called OpenGL. Visual Python, also known as vPython, is a library for creating 3D objects. It allows you to create visual displays and 3D graphics and animations with minimal coding experience. It also can be useful for simulating physics. Turtle, a Python library used for drawing. With very minimal lines of code, you can create amazing spiral 
graphics with it. You can also create other types of 2D art such as fractals, RPy, a package that lets you use the R programming language in your Python projects. R is a programming language for pure statistics, data visualization, and data science. It doesn't work like a general programming language. R is a programming language primarily used for statistical computing and data analysis. It's often used in conjunction with other packages such as Pandas, Spacey, a Python library for advanced natural language processing. It's commonly used for creating chatbots, analyzing text to detect trends, extracting information, and also language translation. Spacey is a library that helps computers understand and process human language. Spacey can break down text into individual units called tokens. It can also identify nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Spacey uses state-of-the-art algorithms to achieve high accuracy. Bokeh, a library that lets you take any data structure at all, such as a CSV or a JSON file or any other hard-coded data, whether it's from a file or a database, and create a data visualization out of it. So you basically can create charts, scatter plots, line graphs, bar charts. It's used a lot for stocks. Plotly, a Python library used for creating interactive and visually appealing graphs and charts. You can perform web-based visualization, and the charts are highly customizable. It's commonly used in data science, financial analysis, engineering, and business intelligence. SQL Alchemy, a very powerful and user-friendly library that lets you create relational databases. It lets you work with databases and tables using Python rather than writing raw SQL, although you can write in regular SQL if you want. Its main selling point is its wide database support, such as PostgreSQL, MySQL, SQL Lite, Oracle, and Microsoft SQL Server. Fast API. This lets you create APIs using the Python language. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it basically allows two different programs to trade information and communicate with each other. Have you ever been prompted to log in with your Google account? Yeah, that's an API. Django, a Python framework for creating websites. It lets you make web pages called views, create and manage databases called models, and implement logic to handle it all called the controller. You can embed Python right into HTML documents, making your website much more dynamic. Django also comes with an admin panel, so you have everything you need to build the website start to finish. Flask, another Python framework for building websites. Although unlike Django, it's more suited for small-scale projects. Creating bigger projects is possible with Flask, but has a steeper learning curve. PyWin32. This is a library that provides access to the Win32 API on Windows. It basically lets your Python programs interact with the Windows operating system at a lower level. This includes working with the file system and directories, accessing and modifying Windows registry, managing threads, controlling UI elements, automate tasks on Windows, and so much more. Py2exe. This allows you to convert your Python scripts into executable Windows programs, basically allowing it to be able to be run on a Windows computer without installing Python. PyQt, a Python binding for the Qt framework. It lets you create graphical user interfaces and applications in Python. Normally, to create user interfaces and programs like this would require a knowledge of either C++ or Java. But PyQt lets you develop cross-platform applications like this with Python. These can run on Windows, Linux, Mac, and Android. You can also use it with a software called Qt Designer, where you can literally design the app by hand, then the program will return to you either the template or the Python code, which cuts down development time a lot. Be sure to share this video and thanks for watching.